we learned already that even the most general case of particle motion can be studied using normal and tangential components, which means that from any given position of this particle, we can always draw a tangential axis that is tangent to the path pointing towards the direction of motion and a normal axis that is perpendicular to the tangential axis and points towards the center of curvature. And the resultant force acting on this particle can be completely resolved into two components, one along the tangential direction, the other along the normal direction. And then, according to Newton's second law, the resultant force along the tangential direction equals to m, the mass of the particle, times a t, which is the acceleration of this particle along the tangential direction. And also we know this kinematic equation that ATDS equals to VdV. Combining these two equations, we get this. And if this particle has moved from position 1 to position 2, we can integrate this equation from S1 to S2. And we can get this equation here. Notice the left-hand side it's simply the total work down to this particle during this process. And this is known as the principle of work and energy. You might ask, what happened to the force along the normal direction? Well, since work is defined as the magnitude of the force multiplied by the displacement along its direction, and since the normal force is always perpendicular to the path, Therefore, there's never displacement along the direction of the normal force. Therefore, the normal force never does work. So this left-hand side, the summation u12 in this equation is the total work down to this particle of all the external forces during this process moving from position 1 to position 2. Now, the left-hand side is the work that we learned. What is the right-hand side? For any particle with a speed, we can define its kinetic energy to be T equals to 1 half mv squared. V is the speed of the particle. Kinetic energy is the energy associated with the motion of the object. Just like work, it is also a scalar. It has the same unit, joule in the SI unit system and foot pound in the US customer unit system. But unlike work, which is a parameter associated with a process, kinetic energy is associated with a status of an object. And as you can see, because it equals to 1 half mv squared, m, the mass of the object, must be non-zero, and the velocity squared must be non-negative, therefore the kinetic energy is always non-negative. So, at state 1, the kinetic energy of the particle is 1 half mv1 squared, and at state 2, the kinetic energy of the particle is 1 half mv2 squared. Therefore, the principle of work and energy that you saw on the previous screen becomes the total work down to this particle by all external forces during the process 1 to 2 equals to T2, the kinetic energy at state 2, minus T1, the kinetic energy at a state 1. In other words, the change in the particle's kinetic energy equals to the total external work down to this particle. Or, this can be rewritten in this form. So the initial kinetic energy of the particle plus the external work down to this particle during this process equals to the final kinetic energy of the particle. The principle of work and energy can also be applied to a system of particles. In this equation, this is the total kinetic energy of all the particles in the system at state 1 or the initial state. This is the total work down to this system by all the external forces during the process from 1 to 2. And this is the total kinetic energy of all the particles at a state 2 or the final state. When we are using this equation, keep in mind that we are making an assumption that there's no energy loss due to particle interaction. For example, 
If the particles are colliding into each other, there will be energy loss in the form of heat or sound. Then this equation will not apply. When an object is sliding on the surface, the frictional force exerted on the object is evaluated by mu k times the normal force n. Mu k is the coefficient for kinetic friction. And when we count for the work done to this object, we can still use the magnitude of the frictional force multiplied by the displacement of this object to count for the work done by frictional force. Although it is not the true work done by the frictional force, because if you recall, the frictional force is the resultant force of numerous horizontal forces acting on the numerous contacting surfaces, and the displacement of these forces are not necessarily S. However, it is still reasonable to use this term because it counts for the total effect of the true work done by the frictional force mu k n s prime as well as the heat loss during friction. Let's look at this example. There's a 10 kilogram crate traveling along this smooth slope. And if at this point shown at x equals to 16 meter, it has a speed of 20 meter per second, we need to determine its speed when it gets to the bottom of the slope, where x equals to zero. If you try to solve this problem using equation of motion as well as kinematics, it will be very, very difficult. This is a great example to be solved using the principle of work energy, because it involves the direct correlation of position and speed. If we do a quick free body diagram of this particle, at any given position, it is only subjected to two forces, its weight and the normal force exerted by the slope. Because the slope is smooth, we don't need to consider friction. Now, because the normal force is always perpendicular to its path, therefore the normal force never does work. So we're going to solve this problem using the principle of work and energy. But notice that in this equation, the total work done to this crate during this process is only the work done by its weight force. So to evaluate the work done by the weight force, we need to first specify the initial and final positions of this particle. And keep in mind that the work done by the weight force only depends on the change in the vertical position of this particle. Therefore, initially at x equals to 16 meter, the vertical position of this particle, y1, is 16 meter. And at the second state, x equals to 0 meter, the vertical position, y2, is 0 meter. Therefore, during this process, the work done by weight equals to positive 1,569.6 joule. It is positive because this particle is moving downwards. Therefore, weight force is doing positive work. And at the initial state, the kinetic energy of this particle is evaluated from its initial speed, 20 meter per second, to be 2,000 joule at state 2. T2 equals to 5 times V2 squared. V2 is our unknown that we need to solve. Applying the principle of work energy, substituting the evaluated values, we can solve for V2 to be 26.7 meter per second.